Hello! Cast your mind back to the early 90s, a time when the best-selling mainstream games had crazy ideas and were all colourful. And if you had a Sega Mega Drive in your house, that was a good thing to play them on. Or a Sega Genesis, as it would have been called if you were in that there America. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that over the last few years, Sega have been handing out licences for other people to make Mega Drive-related guff. Uh, most um, famously, I think, At Games. At least I think it's At Games. Their logo contains a symbol which isn't actually an English letter, so it's hard to tell um, who was selling them off. And in the UK, these uh, licensed devices were sold by a company called Blaze, who I think have gone now. But, as you will see, their stuff lives on. And I'm finally deciding to get round to these because they're selling off the latest model for under 20 quid in Argos. But we'll get on to that later. So yes, they came packaged like this. My god, this has been on the shelf for a while. Dual play, handheld TV, Sega Mega Drive, portable video game player, included 20 games. Look how many pictures of Knuckles we've got. Everybody loves Knuckles. There's even one on the screen. Now you'll notice, Blaze on here, at Ga I'm, I'm going to assume it's at games and not at aims. Um, on the unit itself, so it really is just a repackaging. Look, you can play Sonic and Knuckles, Golden Axe, Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master, Altered Beast, and other such games. On the back, you can see the entire lot. Well, let's read some bump first. The LCD handheld features 20 original Sega Mega Drive games, including Sonic Knuckles, Golden Axe, Cons 3, and more. The easy to use handheld can be used while traveling on bus, car, or train, but never on a plane, and also includes a cable to connect to your TV. Unfortunately, the other end of the cable doesn't connect to the console. It's purely the. No, no, it does. Honest. Oh, look, and Blaze and At Games together at last. Right, what's the deal then? We have Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, Alien Storm, Altered Beast, Arrow Flash, Columns 3, Crackdown, Decap Attack, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, ESWAT, Cyber Police, City Under Siege. I remember being quite obsessed with that game, then getting the version on like Atari ST or Amiga or something, it was fucking awful. I really should go back and play the Mega Drive version. Echo the Dolphin, Echo Jr., Echo's Plumber, Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master, Flicky, mm. Gain Ground, quite a magnificent game that one, Golden Axe, Fucking hell, we were obsessed with Golden Axe, played it all the time. I don't know why, it's really fucking boring. It's one of those games we walk right and repeatedly tap a button, and that's pretty much it. See, what makes or breaks these side scrolly beat em up games is variety, and there's surprisingly little in Golden Axe, tragically, but my god, we loved it at the time. Streets of Rage 2 is probably the finest example, and probably my favourite Mega Drive game, and it's not on this humph. Duel Master! Kid Chameleon, Sonic Spinball, the one everyone was disappointed with because they wanted another Sonic game at the time and it was a pinball game, Shadow Dancer, It's Shinobi with a Dog, and Sonic and Knuckles. Anyway, that one doesn't play Streets of Rage. Fortunately, somebody actually sent me this one that does. Yes, the screen may be slightly scratched, but we don't care. The unit is the same, it's just the games inside that differ slightly. So you've got a little joypad, which actually works quite well, if I remember. Um, you've got a menu button, you've got your start and your pause button, you've got your three standard Mega Drive buttons, so none of that uh, six-button joy for you here. Although, of course, the built-in games don't use the six buttons, so it's not a problem, is it? On, off, head for... No, that's the AV out, and that one is the headphone. Notice they use the same socket for infinite confusion. And volume. No brightness control, which is a bit of a shame, because that's something, you know, it's nice to fiddle with in different light levels. Go on, let's have a quick look then. Notice it actually says out games on the front, and when you start it up. Oh god, Alex Kidd, Alien Storm, Alter E Beastie. Go on, let's play Alter... Oh, what's the next thing? I don't know why I'm looking through them, I just read what they all are. No, I didn't! That was the other unit! Oh my god, it's all new. You've got Crackdown, which is a classic of um, slightly satanic imagery on the box for the 16-bit uh, computer versions, if I remember. Um, yeah, yes, and Streets of Rage, and Streets of Rage 3, and that weird 2D Virtua Fighter. Why Streets of Rage, and Streets of Rage 3, but not Streets of Rage 2? On the plus side, it's got Golden Axe 2 rather than 1, which I think had a bit more variety to it, but I genuinely cannot remember. Sod it! Let's go Streets of Rage, guys! Start. Sega! Every time it plays in your head, doesn't it? It really does. That music, though. Streets of Rage 2 has one of my favourite soundtracks of any video game ever. As does uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, actually. Man, Mega Drive music was pretty good, wasn't it? 
This city was once a happy, peaceful place, until one day a powerful secret criminal organization took over. This vicious syndicate soon had control of the government and even the police force. The city has become a center of violence and crime where no one is safe. Amid this turmoil, sure that's been mixed, a group of determined young police officers has sworn to clean up the city. Among them are Adam Hunter, Axel Stone, and Blaze Fielding. They are willing to risk everything, even their lives, on the streets of rage. And if that isn't the most um, 80s VHS back-of-the-box blurb you've ever read, there we go. Anyway, there's good old Adam. But you can't really read the text there. But he's telling us he's male and he's 23 and nobody ever selects him for some reason, which is why he wasn't in the second one. Go on then. Let's have a quick bash. So I can hold this differently. Go on, let's have Adam, since he remains a bit unloved. Play that music. Punchy, punchy. Oh, bollocks. That's not jump. That's call your mate who attempts to kill you with artillery, but somehow always misses you and hits the enemies instead. No idea. There were two different animations for that, and yet three characters. What is the point? Bang, bang, slaps. Death to you. Look out, it's the breakfast diner. Gee, I hope I can find some meat under a dustbin in a minute that will heal me. Anyway, you get the idea. Let's do that little thing where you grab over them and then spin. I do enjoy that. Oh, man. Still enjoy that after all these years. Oh, this isn't a patch on the Secrets of Rage 2. So, that be that then. So what's the new one like that you actually want to show us, Stuart? Well, for starters, it's blue. But here's the box. Comes in a pretty box of prettiness this time. 20 Sega games built in. Hooray! Very, very similar to uh, that set by the looks of it. You know, you've got your old crack down your e-spot. Although it's got Streets of Rage and Streets of Rage 2 and not the third one. Ooh. Oh, in fact, why don't we look at the back where it shows them all with a weird half-moon light over it. Anyway, the important differences here are one bigger screen, and two, SD card slot. Hmm. Also, rechargeable battery, um, rather than these which take three AAAs, if I recall. Now, the screen on this one is much better, um, as you could probably tell. Actually, let's turn it on again and I can show you. It doesn't take us two seconds, does it? You can see all the uh, individual pixels. Um, I don't know if that will come through in the camcorder, actually. Let's put it dangerously close. And, you know, it does the job, and it's clear. But it could be nicer on a nice modern screen, which is what they've stuck in this one. And here it is, with the Sonic and Knuckles sticker on it again. Weirdly, I'm not going to show you this one. I'm going to show you another one I've got. I shall explain why later. So, this is the one I've actually been playing around with. You'll notice the unit itself is considerably longer to fit in the bigger screen. You've now got the six buttons. Hey! And you've got a USB port to charge the internal battery. Um, basically, it's just a much nicer unit all round. Um, so if it's nicely in the hand, and my god, the screen is better. Ooh, SD card slot, we'll get onto that. So, on it goes. And the screen is far better. You haven't got the little um, grid on around all the pixels. It's far clearer and nicer, and I love it to death. However, there is, well, there's one or two problems which we shall come onto, which is also the reason why I have two of them. But anyway, here's all the built-in stuff. Hey, we've got the first um, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as well, which never really appeared in them before. That's nice. But also, the mighty SD card, which you can select, and if you have a put your ROMs on the card like... Yes, there they all are, to be played. Um, I've stuck on a few sort of example games here, like, ah, Harry Manada, which is a slightly dull... Um, sumo game which I've never played, which I really should at some point. Road Rash, Saturday Night. Saturday Night Slam Fest. Oh god, that's a good one. I'm trying to remember, was it called Saturday Night Slam? That's going to really annoy me now. Well, there's only one way to find out. You press the button, it loads into the old RAM. I should point out the screen is entirely black, it doesn't have blue borders, that's just what it looks like because I haven't turned the lights off. I might do that in a minute, but we're still showing you the unit at the moment. Go on then. Ah, the Capcom Wibble. And, come on, here we go. Man struggles with vest because belt is too big. Saturday Night Slam Masters. This is a bloody great game, it really is. SNES version was slightly better, if I remember. But let's not complain. Single match, yay! Go on then, let's have Gunlock, because he's got the stupidest name in bloody history. 
Ooh, versus Stinger, who uh, went on to found a website based on his own name. Right, we don't care about intros. Come on. Here we go. Fight. Now, something you may notice here, there's a bit of a problem with the old graphics. Good God, I can't remember play this at all. Um, in that there's sort of this weird shimmering effect, like it's downsizing them or possibly scaling, yes, scaling them up or down on the fly would be my guess, actually. Um, my God, he's lost nearly all his energy already. Wow, this is a lot easier than I remember. <laughs> oh God, he's twisting the nipples. No! Sorry, I just suddenly got into this and I wasn't how well I was doing. Here we go, and smack. Right, pin him. I've got no idea how you do that. Not by doing that, unfortunately. Pin, there we are. I am wrestling champ of the world. I could barely see it, couldn't remember any of the moves, and still won very convincingly. I'm happy with that. But yeah, there's this weird sort of, you get it a lot as well, when uh, the screen scrolls vertically, this weird sort of shimmering effect, but not when it goes horizontally. Which is interesting, and I shall tell you for why. One of the reasons I didn't get these when they first came out is I remember seeing the reviews, and a lot of them complained about terrible uh, V-Sync issues, uh, screen tearing, as it scrolled left and right. This has none of that. Uh, this is obviously a different version, to the, or slightly different to the ones that went out. And that reason could be uh, this one was imported directly by Argos from old Act Games. It wasn't sort of released to another person. Does that make a difference? I honestly don't know. But uh, the reported problems with all the horizontal scrolling V-Sync is entirely missing. It's absolutely fine. But you do get this weird rippling vertically. And with some games like Slam Masters there, I don't know if they're running at a different resolution or something, it looks a little bit, well, wibbly and odd. But not really enough to stop your enjoyment. Your enjoyment is stopped by other means that we'll get onto shortly. Uh, yeah, and more importantly, it's a really good use for all those shitty, tiny um, SD cards you've got knocking around that are actually too small to use for anything these days. So, um, what doesn't work on it? Well, uh, no saves. Full stop. If a game has a save battery in it, tough tits. It won't be saving to this. There's no emulation for that, so that is a shame. Um, some games don't work, but, well, I saw a list of stuff which apparently didn't work, and they all worked for me. I don't know if they fixed that, or it could be down to the individual ROM you're sticking on the SD card. I don't know. Still no brightness control. Why? 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 That is annoying. But now we have to get onto the reason I bought two of them. The sound's fucked. I mean, sound emulation on Mega Drive for the Mega Drive has never been a particularly uh, easy thing to get right. And even the best emulators are still slightly off, I suppose, but my god, this is just awful. And I'm not talking just low quality of internal speakers. Anybody familiar with Saturday Night Slam Masters may, may have thought to themselves, bloody hell, that didn't sound right, if for some reason they speak like that. It's so bad that I actually got another one to test if it was the unit that was faulty or not. Plus, I knew somebody who wanted one anyway. Problem is, they now don't want it now that they've heard the quality of the sound, <laughs> so I'm stuck with two of the bloody things, which I will be swallowing later as part of my new circus act. Anyway, I am now going to start up Sonic the Hedgehog. We all know how Sonic the Hedgehog sounds, and how the music sounds, and now you will have to hear it with the bass replaced by occasional tinny distortion. Warning, you will weep. This is really horrible. Ready, ready, yep, yep. Sonic the Hedgehog, please. Thank you. Let's bump the volume up a bit. See, that's alright. Sonic Team presents... Yes, that's a bit off. This is actually painful for me. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. A high note, so it sounds normal. I'm going to turn that off <clears throat> and just internalise my anger shortly. See, the sound emulation on these wasn't bad. It was plenty good enough. And for some reason, it's gone to shit on this one. It really has. Um, here's another good example. Uh, let's fire up Old Streets of Rage 2. Just because if I turn on something that plays Streets of Rage 2 and don't fire up Streets of Rage 2, it's effectively against my religion. Here we go. Yes, we know. We know. It's written on the console. You're very insecure, console manufacturers. Yeah, whatever. 
Ready for the select music. If you know what this music sounds like, your eyes will be weeping tears of pure hatred. Go on then, let's have Max, because he's massively overpowered with that um, headlock thing. Oh. Uh, go on, pick up one of the people and jump around a bit, that's always fun. Whoop, oh, that's the right button. Have some of that. Whee! I can't listen to it. Yeah, sounds fucked. <laughs> it really is as simple as that, and it's such a shame. Because other than this sort of weird vertical ripply thing going on, it would be a pretty good thing. Um, in fact, it would be great for under 20 quid. Stick your ROMs in it, play whatever you want on the go, Bob's your uncle. But even if you put nice headphones onto it, it still sounds dreadful. It sounds slightly better, because obviously small tinny speaker helps nothing. But oh my goggly goodness, riding a tricycle through Jesus of Nazareth's back garden. It's entirely ruined if you know what the Mega Drive sounds like. So if you can put up with a shit sound, or just don't know what it's supposed to sound like, and frankly don't really care about music in general, then perhaps this is something for you. But otherwise, it's a real shame, because it would be such a bargain for the price they are knocking them out for. Ah, tragedy. Oh, go on then, let's quickly show you a more subtle problem with the old uh, vertical scrolling going on. Watch the screen. Can you see the weird ripples there? I can, not sure if it's picking up from the camcorder. If it isn't, I'll edit this bit out. But the point is, it's such a shame. It's a great screen with only that minor problem, but the sound. Oh, the sound. It is such a tragedy. If you know a technical reason for the uh, weird uh, vertical scrolling, I'm guessing it clearly has something to do with the scaling going on. Um, be sure to put it in the comments and then nobody will know if you're right or not, because they don't know you from Adam and you could be making stuff up. Welcome to the internet! Stop. 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 Stop.